I'm Stacy, your SAT tutor, and I'm here to guide you through a little unit we like to call shapes. As you know by now, there's a lot of math on the SAT, and geometry is a good part of the equation. Luckily for you, because shapes exist in the real world, you're already more familiar than you might think. In this lesson, we'll review squares, trapezoids, and other quadrilaterals, as well as focus on finding the areas and perimeters of each. Let's start with defining our shape-shifting pill, the quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is any figure with four sides, like a rectangle or a square, which both have all right angles. The perimeter of any figure is equal to the sum of the lengths of all the sides. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, we just need to know the length of two adjoining sides. For example, in this rectangle, we know that the length of one side is three and the other four. And because rectangles have two sets of equal sides, we know that the other sides of the figure are also three and four. So the equation for the perimeter of this rectangle is p equals three plus four plus three plus four, or p equals two times three plus two times four, which gives us p equals six plus eight. The perimeter of this rectangle is 14. Pretty simple, right? I know this is a lot of review, but it's important to remember the details. Let's take a quick look at the perimeter of a square. Because all of the sides of a square are always the same, we only need to know one side of the square. The perimeter of a square is just four times the length of the side. So if we have a square with a side length of five, then the perimeter of that square is four times five or 20. Finding the area of a figure is slightly different and actually simpler. While the perimeter is the distance around the shape, the area is the measure of the space within it. The formula for the area of a square is side squared. The formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. If you ever forget these formulas, they're included in the formula box on the SAT. There is an oddball in the quadrilateral family, the trapezoid. A trapezoid is a four-sided shape just like a square or a rectangle, but it only has two parallel sides, and they are different lengths. These sides are then connected by lines that aren't parallel or necessarily equal in length. The area of a trapezoid is equal to one-half times the sum of the parallel bases times the height. The height isn't any of the sides. It's the length of the line perpendicular to both bases and is usually given to you in the question. It's shown here as a dotted line. All right, we've covered a lot of facts about a lot of different shapes, so let's apply what we've learned to solving a trapezoid problem similar to what you'll see on the SAT. In the following figure, each square in the grid has sides of length one. What is the area of the quadrilateral A, B, C, D? This is a grid in, so we aren't given any answer choices, which means we can't back solve, but we do have all the information that we need to solve this problem. Looking at the figure, we know that the quadrilateral the question is asking about is in fact a trapezoid with two parallel lines of different lengths. In this case, AD and BC. We're told that each square on the grid has a side of one. We can use this to find the height. If we draw a straight line directly from A to C, it would be the height. We see here that the height is two squares long, meaning we have a height of two. Now we can plug this into our formula for the area of a trapezoid. So we have area equals one half times the sum of the bases times two, or one times the sum of the bases. We see that the bottom of the base is the length of the side of a square, so we know that it's equal to one. The second base, line BC, is the length of the sides of two squares, so we can set that equal to two. Now we can plug this information into the formula, which gives us Area equals one times the sum of one plus two, or three. Now that we know that the area of the trapezoid is three, we can bubble that into the grid in for this problem and move on to the next question. Shapes often look trickier than they are, but as long as you pay attention to the details and take advantage of the formula box, you'll be able to move through these questions quickly. Now that you've learned about quadrilaterals, make sure you take advantage of all the practice problems available throughout this course. 